For most of my life, I've been a chef, a DJ, and a grower. Nothing makes me happier than good cuisine, great music, and excellent flour. Join me on an adventure as we dig into cannabis culture. My name is Cameron, and this is Deep Roots. Hey Deep Roots fans, I'm chilling here at Tempe Town Lake, about to go visit with some new friends, Arise. They've got the world's largest cannabis cultivation that's done aeroponically. Uh, in case you don't know, aeroponics is the growing of a plant without media, so this is gonna be super exciting. Let's go tour. So how did we find ourselves in this particular location, which by the way, it's very moody. I love it. I feel like we're, I don't know, filming an episode of The Godfather or <laughs> yeah, something. Right. No, uh, totally. This is actually in downtown Phoenix, Cornish Pasty. Mm. So it's it's great. The drinks are great. They have these hot pocket looking things with just different ingredients. You can get a cheeseburger in there. You can get Thanksgiving in a, in a hot pocket, essentially. Uh, it's great, it's local, the guys here, the bartenders, everybody's everybody's great. Hey Ryan, you mentioned music and you mentioned a band. Can you give me a little bit of info on, like, what's your, obviously a musician? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I mean, like, I don't know if it's evident, but I was never really cut out for sports or, or anything like that, so. Um, so I was able to find a niche in, in the music thing, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's my thing, right? Like, when I'm not working or traveling or whatever, it's all music, so. I play in a band in Chicago called No Star. Okay. We played House of Blues a couple times, cool. Metro, Bottom Lounge, a lot of venues in Chicago. Hoping to play in Phoenix at some point, there but it <laughs> hasn't there happened yet. So I'm super interested in knowing about the aeroponic methodology and what makes it so different than all other types of growing. Um, so it's definitely what makes us unique. Um, it's different than pretty much anything anyone's ever seen inside of a you know large scale cannabis grow. Um, so aeroponic growing is a indoor lighted grow just like hydro, um, but the large difference between it is, is that it's literally a soilless grow. Our plants grow inside of a four inch netted pot that is filled with kiln dry clay balls. And that's just something for that plant to be able to push against something so it can stand up right in the table. The roots grow directly out of the bottom and they sit inside of a closed loop table where they are fed on a precise regimen that is altered throughout its life by a high pressure mist that's delivered directly to the roots themselves. Um, so it provides a number of advantages uh, that the plant has to do no work for uh, uptake of its food and nutrient or oxygen, doesn't have to fight through soil for it, so it can put all of its energy into growing really beautiful, uh, lovely buds. Um, and then where it becomes something that is really incredible for a consumer is, is that because there's no soil or minerality built up around that root ball when we do f pure water flush at the end of the life cycle we're able to achieve zero particles per million on average of remaining nutrients so you're smoking bud from us each time that is defined by cannabis by that strain specific turf profile sure. and not the residual nutrients man i hadn't really considered how impactful that is and that was almost certainly not a driver of what you know decided to do the aeroponics but like look at this like really amazing sort of uh, knock-on benefit from that choice and I think people deserve that you know when they walk into a dispensary and they pay 45 or 50 or 60 dollars for an eighth of cannabis they deserve it oh, dude, experience yeah, that delivers totally what do you got so what do you uh, what do you think of the uh, soup so far well so check it out dude I'm loving the soup um, I'm actually a big soup fan. I probably make soup like once or twice a week at the house, like straight yeah. through summer and everything. So, yeah, good call on the potato leek. Yeah, I'm a yeah. fan. I haven't even touched the pasta yet. How about you guys? This is awesome. It's like awesome. Some wow. kind of adobo carne pulled pork, something in here that's it's hitting me right. Well, hey, you guys, I really appreciate you bringing me out to Cornish Pasty. Super great meal, uh, even better company, and I cannot wait to see your facility. Let's good. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Nice one. Welcome to the Garden of Whedon. 
Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, so man. Now tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, so this is our mother room. This is where we bring our mothers in. We mother them out, we take clones from here. Uh, we pick out different strains that we want to that we want to throw into into the veg before they make it into flour. Uh, so that's basically what this room is all about. Cool. I want to jump down here and uh, yeah. may maybe interact a little bit more with these. Absolutely. So John, one thing I'm noticing here is the killer health of your plants. I'm seeing green all over the place. I'm not seeing like the discolored petioles. You know, happy leaves looking oh, yeah. really healthy. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the genetics, where you get them from? Not a cop, right? Just Definitely making sure. Not a cop. <laughs> okay. Definitely not no. a cop. Uh, we get these genetics within state. It's from a very reputable company, and we are able to acquire different genetics about every six months or so. Bring them in, test them out, see how they do. High resin, high yield, not as problematic. Cool. I don't know if you know this, but Growers Network actually has its own list of vetted breeders and geneticists, uh, and they supply around the world. So uh, I would definitely recommend looking into that. And certainly I'm gonna be happy to share that link with you. Oh, cool. No, absolutely. I mean, I can always get some good genetics in here and grow them out, see how they do, yeah. So I'm super interested in seeing how these roots look, because I can tell everything above looks great. I'm assuming you've got a killer root, oh, root yeah, ball dude. below. So down here, obviously the root's gonna get bigger as the plant grows. So you have a nice ball there of just of roots. So, you know, they're nice, healthy roots. Uh, no root scale, rot, no, no root pythium. Rot. No, and you, you'll be able to see that in the plant. You know, because our system is so, it's a lot different than, you know, you have no media, there's no buffer in between. If something was to happen to the plant, you're gonna notice it right away. Right away. Yeah, I mean, whether sure. it be feeding, something with the roots system, uh, pythium, fusarium, whatever, right. you're gonna be able to see that within the plant, start yellowing out and overall plant health at that point. Great. Well, I'd love to see what happens. Where, where do we go from here? Yeah, so once we get, we get the clones from the moms. We take them onto propagation before they make it into veg. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. All right, let's cool. do it. Welcome to the Arise Propagation Room. So once we make it out of the mother room, we take the clones, we get them in here into what you can see is our custom made cloner table at this point. Um, and it's all aeroponics, it goes into here. Once we see a few roots, 15, 20 days later, they go into the five inch net pot. Uh, and then they stay in here throughout this entire life cycle. So you can see a little bit of root there coming out and that's, that's enough for them to feed off of. How so, long was it sitting in this net pot before the roots started to get out beyond the... Well, we want to wait and make sure we have a nice size root, a few inches, to make sure it's going to it's gonna reach the bottom so of the you, net So when pot. you drop it in with the hydrogen, there's already Absolutely. at least like the tap root yeah, is coming. Ex yeah. Yep, exactly. So once we see a little bit there, we get it in here and within a few days you start obviously getting getting a little bit a little bit bigger. So, okay, right. So two weeks or so and then over to here and then we end up with something. Yeah, this is probably a good two weeks after planting. Got it. So, uh, yeah, not, not it, it's still very young. It, we're only gonna do about a four week total for veg. Got it. Uh, so, once we get it to the roots to this big, obviously we start separating them a little bit, as you can see, to make sure that they don't, uh, they don't get the roots all tangled up from there. Is it okay, can we, can we pop one of these Absolutely. off so I can see like the plumbing underneath? So yeah, so these here were only, oh. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. That's a really fine mist. Yep. Uh, do, you, do you use this sort of emitter on all, all the way around no, the no, whole production cycle? No, no, we are cycle? only using these for the, for the clones. Got it. Yeah, Got yeah, it. They, they need a little bit more. So uh, So that finer particle, you get like basically more surface area. Exactly, exactly. So we have the feeding intervals. They feed a little bit more than, than we have in the, in the, in the flower room. I understand. In the room. I know you're a super experienced grower. You've grown in lots of media, uh, lots of different styles of growing. Would you say that aeroponics is like now your, absolutely. it's your jam? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think aeroponics has taken the cake. Obviously you have a, you don't have a buffer where things can go wrong, but once you dial it in and you see the growth and you see that, that root mass and you, and you see during those dry intervals, the way that the roots just, just kind of expand from there for, for that nutrient. I mean, it's just completely gonna change your mind once you see that type of product. Uh, the other really good thing that we like about the aeroponics system, once it reaches the flower stage, we're able to flush the plant for totally, a good, yeah. Totally. So we're able 
to flush it and get a complete clean product at the end where we get all the residuals out. And because there's no media, you, we literally get those parts per millions down to, to zero. That's it, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Well, this is sharp. Can, uh, can you show me the next uh, phase of life? Yeah, absolutely. We'll awesome. go into the, into the veg room. Awesome. Yeah. Gaze upon the abstraction, sir. Gaze upon the abstractions is a killer name for a band. So this is your veg two room, and I can tell already that these plants are further along in life than uh, the room we were just in. Yeah, exactly. So this is our Arise uh, veg room here. And as you can see, we, we still have the same tables. We use the same system. Um, the only difference is uh, we, start, we start separating the plants quite a bit. And that's obviously to make sure that the, that the root system doesn't, or the roots don't, don't, don't get tangled up together. Well, I'm real interested in seeing what happens to the roots in this room because based on what I saw in the other room, I'm thinking at this point they're gonna start to, what, they're gonna hit the bottom and they're gonna start to run towards each other. They're gonna start to create that mat. Yeah, and, and you won't see too much of a mat until we get into flower, but you still will see a larger root mass than what we had in the other rooms. Got it. Yeah, Got so it. you still have a large root there. Tell me a little bit more about the uh, these tables and the manufacturer of these tables. Yeah, so we get these from WS Hampshire. We've been working with this manufacturer for a few years. Uh, these are the same tables we've used in every grow, including our Illinois grow. Uh, and we've been doing a few adjustments throughout the years with new generation tables. One of them is the OPEC white here. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see here, this one, we actually put a film to make sure there's no light penetration and get that allergy growth, which is something we don't want. Whereas the new generation tables that we're gonna look at, those, we don't have to do this at all. Those already came manufactured the way we wanted them to, make sure there's no light penetration um, and that's, grow from there. That's the kind of partner you want. Someone that's, you know, hey, we got this thing, it's working you know, 80% of the yeah. way solid, but by the way, we've got some algae growth. What can you do about making the, the plastic opaque to, to cut down on things like the bacterial growth, right. et cetera, et cetera, so. Right, absolutely. And the great thing about this system of these tables is they are pretty much just a plug and play. Everything on the inside comes in, the manifold is in, we just plug it in, get plants in here, and yeah, we've been doing it for, for a few years now, so. It's been working out great. Nice one, nice one. Uh, so you've got all these plants, these are all in about a sort of one month of life sort of time period? Yeah, so here, well, th here these will make it into flower here within the next week or so. Got it. Uh, so what we want to do in this room is start separating the plants uh, depending on strain to make sure we get those tables filled in flower. Uh, and those will hold 24 plants, which we'll see. Uh, so. It's a lot of uh, uh, cleaning up the plants, making sure that they get topped in here. Topping, um, structuring, right. skirting up. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It. So um, that's, that's basically what we focus on here. Um, and again, we, we wait for the plant to be ready we, and we move it on to, to flower from there. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's go on over to flower. Yeah, let's go. Cool. Another photo shoot going on <laughs> right now. That is amazing. No, 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 no. We'll stop. No, you guys, you guys are doing stills. Dude, what we're doing is like not even art. This. Is <laughs> All right. How fast do you want me to walk? I'm walking towards you, right? Get on to my right side. All right. Let's go back a little bit. And action. Action. No, thank you. So, but I'm not breaking the fourth wall. I'm just sort of like I mean, stoic I'm staring. Should I? Should I be looking at the camera, bro? Look at the camera, right? Can we hold for sound? Hold for sound. <laughs> Thank you. How's everything? It's, it's, it's like so hard to enjoy the graffiti from this close. Oh, I'm, here. You can I can enjoy this graffiti more, but that graffiti is terrible. Well, yeah, yeah, but we need to enjoy the graffiti on camera. So things. So not, I know. That's like, the, it's like, the, it's like a weird. All, but dude, this white blob looks fucking amazing from this close. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah, white blob. I still haven't thought of anything good to say. Oh, 
fun. Uh, your flower room is very, very bright, and I can see with clarity uh, you have some serious buttage going on here. Oh yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so tell me about what we're looking at. Yeah, this is the strawberry jelly. It's one of our newer strains that we have in rotation. Uh, this is only actually our second harvest of it. So it's been doing very well. It looks really nice. It smells good. So we just want to wait and see after cure if it's something that we're going to we're going to keep. We here we are in week seven and these plants look amazing. Uh, and I can't help but think that this has a lot to do with the uh, really amazing root systems that we've seen sort of throughout the uh, phases of life uh, up until this point. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, so one of the products we love to use is Hygrozyme. We've been, we've been using that for a few years now. It works really well as an enzyme where uh, the roots are able to actually uptake all the nutrients and, 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 and in return, we obviously get healthy plants. I, I mean, I can't say enough, I can't stress enough how that product has worked for us in this system. We're very particular of what we use. We have such a good relationship with those guys, they're actually gonna send us a new R&D uh, high shield product that we're gonna try out. And that should help us with uh, pest control uh, and, and things like that to, to help obviously grow healthy plants. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, Sipco, I'm definitely familiar with the Hygrozyme yeah. product. I've used it before. I've you know, never used it in, a, in an aeroponic system. It's clearly working for absolutely. you. Absolutely, I'd be pretty excited about the, uh, the the High Shield product as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't wait to get it in and, and give it a try, and obviously just keep producing some really some really nice product. Awesome, awesome. Well, environmentally, it feels really good in here. Uh, the smell of this room is completely outrageous. I feel like I'm in like a fruit bowl right now. Yeah, definitely, it's a good smell. Every room you walk into because we have different strains and obviously different terpene profiles. You walk in and it's just a big slap of terpene. Sma smacks you, smacks you right in the face. face. Right, right, yeah. right. So. Indeed. So John, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the strain situation here. I know that you said you've got about 20, 25 in-house strains. Are there any particular favorites, something maybe you've been growing for a real long time that you're happy with? Yeah, I mean, all of the Arise strains are good. Uh, I like Lava Cake, Mac One's good, GMO is good. One of the strains I personally have been growing for at least close to 10 years was the Jack Herrer. Uh, but out of those 25 strains, I mean, we just have so many. Here, you have the Strawberry Jelly, Gushers over here. Uh, you have the Dosi 18 down there. So we have a little bit for whatever your, your flavor is, whatever that terpene profile you're looking for, whatever, um, feeling that you're looking for, uh, it's definitely gonna, we have a variety. So John, to your point uh, about the sort of success that you've had growing aeroponically, is this the kind of system you would recommend to, I don't know, someone else that's thinking about starting a commercial operation? Would you say, oh yeah, definitely dive oh, in on yeah. the aeroponics? Absolutely. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit more cost up front than any other grow media or grow system. But at the end, you're using less nutrients, maybe even a quarter of what you would normally be using, less waste, so it's even more environmentally friendly than any other method where we don't have soil that we're just, tons of soil that we're, we're, we're throwing away. Sure. So um, it's worked out, I highly recommend it. You get a really clean burn um, that you want when you, whenever you light up a doobie. That's right. awesome, yeah. that's really great, man. Well, I'm sure that you're gonna be blowing a lot of people's minds with this, and I'm sure that there's gonna be people that are interested in taking you up on that challenge. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Well, I really appreciate you showing me around your flower rooms. I think, yeah, I, I think it looks great. I am completely blown away by the aeroponic uh, methodology here at your facility. You guys are knocking it out of the park. Uh, I, you know, I, my feeling is, is people are gonna take note of this because uh, this is not something you normally see at commercial scale. Uh, you guys are doing it right. I think you're gonna blow a lot of minds with your process. Yeah, thanks, man. It's been, it's been a lot of work, but obviously hard work pays off, and, and here we are a few years later. to town now. <laughs> trouble, trouble. So uh, I'm here to do some work uh, with my colleagues at uh, Cannon Cribs and Growers Network. Right on. And we're working with Arise, whom I know you know of because I've seen their product on your store shelves. It's always so special to be a part of something like this where I can go and see these things. I mean, 
If you had asked me six months ago if I'd ever see a you know scale uh, aeroponic cannabis, That's yeah, wild, I, 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 right? I, who? No one in their right mind would do that. And I just like met these guys, and yeah. they're so freaking cool, and they are sharp. Yeah. It's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, you yeah. I went, what are you doing? Yeah, aeroponics. <laughs> How big is this? They really produce beautiful flour. Beautiful. So when we go and, and sell that flour, you know, we, we explain to them, the patients, the process, and they're like, what is this? How does that work? And we like explain to them how clean it is and the process of, you know, the water spraying the, the, the roots every so often. And patients just love that. They eat that up, so. You think of a rise and how technically, A, it's, it's, it's at a very high level and then they're doing it at a commercial scale. We've seen a lot of other grows though that they poured a lot of money into horrible execution. So uh, I guess that sort of brings me to the business model that we do at Greenbelt Strategies, which is, uh, you know, there's there's two different business models. One is where we can get involved from the very beginning, uh, do the license application, the design and the build, and then the management of, uh, and then the other is the turnaround, and it's. Uh, very similar and I you know maybe it's just because we've worked so much together in the past that we both have this sort of like symbiosis and, and kismet and chemistry between us uh, but I thought it was really cool the way uh, that I got introduced through Jamie to you guys I've really loved working with uh, Rain and you guys have really helped me and my business to sort of really put a fine point on what it is I do, what my strengths are, uh, and then to be able to leverage you guys in your strengths to sort of round out the portfolio of services that I can offer. So um, yeah, big ups to Rain Strategy. <laughs> it is very symbiotic. Yeah. You're, you're always that efficiency, project management, you have everything nailed, very similar to, to yeah. Bob on our team. When I see you analyze a project, you're able to drill right in and figure out what's essential, how to get there, and how to execute it. And that's a lot about what we're built, what Rain's built at, and I think that's why Rain and Greenbelt do so well together. Right. Because although we have different backgrounds and complementary skill sets, you and I are looking at it from a different point of view. And so that's what, what Rain does. We have to look at it from full inception of whether it's a development project or a management project. What does the patient need and what does the client need? And how do you get those two things together? And we try to do that with our, with our skill sets. We draw on our background. We've built a platform of some of the top operators. We outsource a lot of stuff. We have the top attorneys, we have the top CPAs, bookkeepers, all the way down the line that lets us maximize our time and our skills to turn a company around or get it to another level. And we do that all in a very transparent manner. We act as if we're a public company. We disclose everything. And our job is really to make it a great patient experience as well as optimize the business for the operator or the owner um, and maximize the shareholder value. And that's what we're all about. And so we've got to figure out how to do that. And we get to draw on great companies like you that have this amazing vision to drill right into a cultivation site. And you see these fine points that are just like blow me away when you go in and do that stuff. So you guys, there's uh, a lot of activity right now uh, with the upcoming election, Prop 207 here in Arizona. And I want to know what Local Joint is doing, what Rain Strategies is doing to sort of prepare for uh, I guess we'll call it Cannabis 2.0, maybe 3.0 here in Arizona and beyond. Right. Yeah. Our market's very unique though. We have probably maybe 60 cultivations out of the 131 licenses. There's going to be so, a flower shortage. You can't grow a plant and yeah. have it into a finished yeah, product yeah, the next overnight. Day. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So we saw people price gouging and totally. you know we saw not all the products were available and a lot of the operators um, weren't prepared for that. So what we've done is we've gone to our clients and recommended that they get control of their source of product, control the supply chain. Sure. Without that, and buying on the wholesale market, they're gonna get squeezed. Okay, I think that when you lay down a solid foundation and, and you're fully transparent and you help people you know, figure out how to run their business, it's better for everyone. When, when it goes adult use, you're either prepared or you're not. If you are prepared, fantastic. If you're not, in 12 to 18 months, you're gonna be calling Rain to come sort the problems out. That's awesome, that's awesome. I'll be right there to back you up, homie. <laughs> we'll do it again. Yeah. Turn around time. Bring in green belt. Yeah. Be fun. We get to yeah. cultivate together again. I know. I'm, I'm really excited for when the opportunity comes to see you guys kind of like the mad scientists working together. I've heard, I've heard many stories. All right, you guys. Well, we'll see you next time around at Grow Sciences.
How about here in the shade? Yeah. We're all of those totally weak. My Instagram viewers, followers are gonna go way down now. No, those are actually pretty safe. <laughs> I assume it was the artwork that carried me most of the way. Wait, what is this? It's one of those ball contraptions, but the no, there's no balls going right now. I want to find a guy who makes these things and like apprentice for that person for like a year. <laughs> what, one of these contraptions? Yeah, dude, like if this was my hobby, like my life would probably be complete. <laughs> So Reese, I just wrapped up with John over on the production side, and now I want to learn a little bit how Arise handles post-production uh, to ensure the same kind of quality that they're producing over there makes it all the way to the market. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in our wet harvest room, and some of our workers right here are deleafing the plants that have just been cut down earlier today. I noticed that you're leaving uh, the plant whole. You're not breaking it down into wishbones or anything like that. That's obviously uh, a relatively unique process. Not everyone is doing that. We like to um, whole dry our plants and that ensures a real nice slow dry to them. And that'll really pop the flavor and bring out the terpene profile in it. Okay, so we de-leaf, we hang them, we roll them out seven days-ish dry. And then what happens after that? We go into bucking? So yeah, we'll go and we'll denug them, cut off every little nug, we'll put it into a bucket and where that sits for about another 14 days, which at that point will be into our, dry, or our curing process. Okay. So the aeroponic system is giving you not only dependability, but consistency of both quantity and quality. Uh, and I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about this strain that I'm seeing over here. What are we looking at? Uh, I can tell you that it's looking pretty good. Yeah, so this is our ice cream cake strain and growing aeroponically has a lot of benefits. We get the consistency to where we can actually forecast ahead of time for how much weight we're gonna be growing in the next month or so. So we get a real good average of each table and each strain. Can you give me a rough average? Uh, how much is you know coming through this harvest room on any given week? Yeah, so we're doing about 17 tables a week okay. and we're averaging anywhere from five to six pounds a table so you're looking at a fair amount yeah, of 100 weight, pounds anywhere, a week or 100 plus pounds yeah. every week so and then that's dry weight so when you talk about wet weight sure. you know you can times that essentially by five so reese can you tell me uh one of the tools or any of the tools that you're using to help ensure that your finished product has the quality and consistency that you guys are looking for? Yeah, so once we get it out of the dry room and denugging it, it'll go straight into a bucket, and that is accompanied by a Bovida pack, and that is one of the tools that we actually use to help ensure the quality throughout the curing process. Number one, it's got a uh, terpene shield on it that helps protect those terpenes, so you can get the same terpene profile from the plant that was on your table after you cut it down to the time it's done curing. And then the second one is the two-way humidity control. If we, you know, accidentally over dry something or get a little bit drier than we would like, it we can, you back. can, yep, you can pop that yeah. moisture back up, and then vice versa. If you get something that's a little wet, you can actually throw it in there to help it dry it out a little bit more. Yeah, those Bovida packs are, you know, largely an industry standard. I see them lots of places and depending on what part of the country you're in, they have different uh, humidity profiles mm -hmm. that sort of fit that region. So yeah, and we use a, a higher humidity profile because we are here in Arizona. So stuff tends to dry out a lot quicker here when you got 5% humidity. You know, I ran into that a lot when I was in Colorado. It's like these places with really low humidity. Mm -hmm. uh, in an hour, you can go from 15% to 10%. Like all of a sudden you can like end up with buds that turn to dust like the moment you pick them up. Yep. And that's why, you know, all the rooms that we have here are humidity fed so we yeah. keep a real consistent humidity throughout the building cool well i'll tell you what man this ice cream cake it looks absolutely epic i would love to see what this looks like once we get down into packaging yeah absolutely you want to head over there yeah let's do it perfect All right, so here we are in our packaging room. 
We do everything by hand here. We can ensure a real precise weight on it, and then it doubles over as a quality control. So we can get any of those buds that didn't quite get hand trimmed correctly or that have little scragglers at the end of them and get them out of there. In a lot of places, you have to have a, um, completely, a sealed, completely yeah. sealed container, and you can't see it. And then we have our hanging roots, which also signifies that we are grown aeroponically. Cool. And then we have a slat for our sticker, which will be the strain sticker, whether it's ice cream cake, wedding cake. So what we have here at the bottom is gonna be those teal waves and lets the consumer know that we are all aeroponic. We also have our lid that has that gasket seal in there that will help, you know, Maintain the quality. Maintain the quality. It won't uh, compromise the moisture content or anything sure. like that. So you can, you know, essentially leave it here in this container for, you know, up to a, around a month without you seeing any degradation of the product. Will you tell me a little something about these? These are the funniest yeah. little joints I've ever seen. So these are little quarter gram joints. They've been dubbed by our customers, the dog walkers. They're great to go out and you know take a short walk smoke it we're not using any shake or any fillers it's strictly nug which you know ensures people will keep on coming back for them you know it is a little bit of a chore to you know make the quarter grams yep. but you, whatever makes our customers happy we're willing to do and this is one of them so that's awesome 12 quarter gram pre-rolls i love it yep yeah, 12 that... quarter grams for th full three grams in there you can't keep them on the yeah, shelf yeah. so <laughs> that's something right. to say so that's great man well, Reese, I really, really appreciate your time. I w I'm supposed to go over to Extraction now and meet with a colleague of yours. Yeah, you're gonna go meet Lawrence, very knowledgeable guy. Cool, nice one, brother. Nice I really appreciate you. your time. My pleasure. All right, be good. Have a good day. Lawrence. Hey. I'm Cameron. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I just got done hanging out with Reese, and uh, now I'm here to learn a little bit about the Extraction side here at Arise. And I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about your backstory and uh, how we uh, do things here in Extraction. Yeah, for sure. Uh, started Extracting back in 2013, just trying to get some clean meds. Uh, and then just, you know, got a job at a dispensary years ago and then just kind of worked my way into the lab there and now I run this one. So what are some of the products you produce here in uh, the Arise Lab? Oh, quite a few. Uh, mostly live resin extracts uh, made, you know, to be smoked directly. Uh, we make carts, uh, diamonds and sauce, uh, sugars, butters, all sorts of things. Okay. I'm sure there's some things that the market demands. There's probably some things that are favorites of yours. Do you want to tell me about a couple of the different products you guys have? One of my favorite ones is diamonds and sauce. Uh, it's just kind of always been one of my favorites. Here's some diamonds that we did from an extraction. It's Jenny Kush. Uh, some nice big old rocks in there. Wow. Yeah, and those still have a little bit of the smell left on them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's uncommon? Uh, well, lots of times when you see them, they'll have uh, been washed so that all of the terpenes are removed entirely. Makes them a lot clearer, but they don't really have any personality left. Got it. Uh, and then normally what we would do with these is mix them with this terpene sauce. And that's more of just a, a liquidy, and that has a lot stronger smell to it. So definitely. And that's where that's where all the scent is and the taste. Uh, when you mix those together, you get your more more full spectrum feel to it. You get okay. the taste and the high. So we have a diamond, we have a sauce, and do you have a product of them mixed together or something uh, similar? Not here. We tend to wait to do that right at packaging. If you mix them together, sometimes you can have some weird things happen if they sit for too long. Got uh, it. We like to do it right when it goes into the package, stick them in the fridge, call it done. What's the expectation then in terms of shelf life? Like they've been mixed together, they're packaged, and now what? It's got a shelf life of... Uh, well, the shelf life, if you store it properly in the fridge, it can be easily a year. Okay. Uh, if you're storing it just on your table, uh, usually about a month or two in is when you really start to notice that flavor isn't there anymore, the consistency is probably changing, and Got it's probably it. darker also. So why don't you tell me a little bit about these ovens? It looks like each one has a slightly different product, so I'm sure that there's something different between them. Uh, correct, yeah. Well, they're all across international ovens. Uh, they're medium size. They're just best bang for the buck it seems. It's really nice with these across internationals, especially having five of them. Uh, you know, you can adjust the temperature to whatever you want and I can do different things with every single one if I needed to. Awesome. Hey, let me ask you something about this. I notice you've got, this must have all come from one run. This was all started at the same time. Is this generally the volume of what's gonna get kicked out of your extraction machine on any given pass? Actually, this is a little bit more than normal. Blueberry seems to make quite a bit, uh, but each run we're going to be putting out probably uh, at least three of these. Got it. Uh, completely full, sometimes four. 
Um, each one of these ovens I think can hold on average like five or six pounds if you don't cram it in too tight. Got it. Uh, it can do quite a bit of work. Well, I really appreciate the tour around your extraction lab. This is a pretty impressive place and uh, it's a pretty impressive job you're doing. I, I do enjoy it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Hi brother, thank you. Be good. Me too. Hey brother. Hey, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I'm just here after stopping by Arise and checking out their operation, uh, and hopefully you can show me some of their great products that I saw. Yeah, most definitely. I'd love to, my man. All right, what do you got? Uh, we are one of Arise's main dispensaries, their only dispensary at this moment, actually. Uh, they have been with us for about a year now. They're fantastic. We've been carrying their products before that. Uh, absolutely love what I do here and absolutely love their brand. You know, one of the things that I really liked about Arise was their consistency and the quality. Uh, and I'm sure that's something that you could probably speak to here. Oh, 100%. My, my personal favorite thing about their line is every single eighth, whether it be an eighth, a joint, whatever you're grabbing from them, it is always gonna be consistent. You know that golden ticket that you picked up on day one is gonna be that same hit that you get three months down the line when you pick it up again. That's really awesome. Well, so I'd love it if you, we could just sort of like go through, like maybe starting with the flour and then get into the concentrates, maybe talk about you know each one of these things, maybe some of your favorites, maybe some of the customer's favorites. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So to start, can choose one of their prepackages eights, of course. Uh, it's gonna be their Puta Breath. It is one of their award-winning strains, actually. They won, I believe it was three separate awards in the last uh, Earl Cup. Super, super awesome strain. It's got like a nice kind of sweet aroma to it, if you'd like to give it a nice smell here. Ah, oh, it's great. Beautiful light nugs in there. Absolutely fantastic. And definitely one of our best sellers in shop. The people absolutely love that strain. Awesome, awesome. Then, most popular option from Arise in store, it's one of their newer lines actually, they, we call them their dog walkers. Uh, they released a line of mini joints, child proof to heck of course. Yes. But they're little quarter gram joints in there, you can get them in a couple of their strains. I gotta wrap it up with my personal favorite. Sure the live sugar golden ticket specifically uh what's really really awesome about their golden ticket is it was a pretty popular strain here or here in arizona and then it just disappeared you could not find it anywhere uh they're one of the last people to continue to carry it it's one of my personal favorite strains um it just is a more sativa dominant hybrid super euphoric super giggly it's impossible not to have a great time on it. And then their lab tech just does an amazing job at pulling out the terpenes. So it's yeah, a killer profile. I, I spent some time with the lab tech and he's a sharp dude. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna take one of each. Alrighty, my man, so let's get you scanned in for these guys. So one thing I can tell you about marigolds can be used as a companion plant. So if you're planting your cannabis plants outside, you put your marigolds around them and they will help draw pests away from your cannabis plants because they like the, the smell or the taste of the, of the marigolds. Way cool, I did yeah. not know that. That's way, way cool. Yeah. Sweet, alrighty man. I think I got you all bagged up and ready to go. You have a beautiful rest of your day, my man. Any big plans? Yeah, I'm gonna go smoke this shit with my crew. There we go, that right, sounds dude. like a great plan. Nice one, be good. Have a great one, man. Arise people, I've had a super awesome time here in Phoenix, uh, getting to meet you guys and learn about all your products. Uh, and I'm super happy to be here at uh, Dom Life. Yeah, so Dom means delivery of medical marijuana. It's a fantastic smoking lounge here in the Valley. I don't know if you guys checked out the facilities, but um, yeah, you can consume cannabis on this location. Um, and they have their delivery service, so you can 
get the marijuana delivered to your doorsteps. Farm to table. <laughs> right. Farm to table experience. So, uh, hey John, what do we have here? This is the strawberry jelly. So it has a very fruity smell to it. Sure. Uh, it's more of a 50-50 hybrid, I would say. Uh, but yeah, so we have a few here. And we have this like stunning piece of Gravity, gravity bong. bong. Yeah, this is like gravity bong 2.0. It's right. like it's like Wi-Fi enabled Bluetooth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want me to? Can I light for you? Oh yes, no, this no. is for. Okay, so I'm gonna do the lighter. You've okay. got the. Okay, and then and I you're get, gonna do so it's the like thing. a triple. Yeah. yeah. So you light, flip. Yeah. Light, light ready, flip. There it is. There it is. Put me on the spot. <laughs> okay, then you clear it. No. <laughs> oh, okay. no, I, I, I'm happy oh, to clear this. Is, this is actually perfect for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good left. Yep. There we go. That's great. Wow, look at that. That's that pretty good. That was really good. My eight year old is going to be super proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clear, I think. Yeah. I mean, that I was just a don't large word, like, goal also. So. That was. That was. Okay, good teamwork. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that was huge. I don't know if I could have done it by myself. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm always interested in learning about uh, definitely the food scene here, the music scene, the culture, the people, the arts, the thing that sort of ties all of this stuff together, uh, given how integrated cannabis and the arts are. Yeah, there's just, I don't even know where to begin with Phoenix, because there are really so many different things to do if you're into, you know, your outdoor activities, if you're into food, restaurants, bars, stuff like that, I mean, there's definitely a vast different, you know, there's just a lot of different things that you could do depending upon what scene you're into. I mean, we're definitely into the food scene and obviously go to a lot of restaurants and, um, you know, cannabis facilities, but um, I think we're also really into, you know, the hiking. Like there's Camelback Mountain that's very close. There's your South Mountain. So all within a 15 minute drive, you can go hiking and be outdoors, but then there's, you can go to Flagstaff or Sedona is extremely close. And I was just about, so is that like a day trip sort of thing? Like is that a pretty common destination for, for people who are in the Phoenix area that go up to the mountains? I'm assuming it's oh, a little absolutely. bit cooler there and get yeah. away from the heat and get away from the sprawl. Well, you're not enjoying this dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a dry heat, it's a dry heat. You guys, I really love the hospitality arise from the consistency and the quality of the flour, the extract and the consistency and the quality of the people that I've gotten to meet with here. It's like, I can't thank you enough. I really, really appreciate it. Super, super unique and mind blowing system. And I can't, I don't say Thanks, that all the time. Man. Thanks man. It was a pleasure to show you what we do. Yeah. I like this, I like this, I like this. I've already got this, which is totally fucking amazing. Coco, so how long you been in the vinyl business? Um, a little over 30 years. Yeah. Sounds about right. Where did, you, where did you come up here in Arizona? No, I've only been here for seven years. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm from, from California as well. I lived for 30 years in the Bay Area and I lived down oh, in San Diego for, for another 10. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm up in Portland now. Oh, nice. Where uh, were you, uh, when were you out there? When was I in the Bay Area? I, yeah. I mean, I started DJing in the, in the early 90s. Um, I do hard to find records still. I've you know, pressed like a dozen records or so. Um, yeah, that was great. What kind of stuff are you pressing up? Um, I mean, I was mostly doing house, disco edits, bootlegs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure we know a ton of the same people. I used to shop at Primal. I used to own Daddy's Records in Berkeley. Uh, so I know, I, I know, I know Buna and Rob okay, no and one yeah, no. And I've been in your fucking shop many times. So I remember the stacks of shit. Yeah. So you know who introduced me to you was Joe I know Janene. For, that's so funny. And we were just talking about, didn't, he did that Love on a Rainy Day, I think, with Tasho. Like, someone was just asking me about that record the other day. I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, I only got one of those and I still play it like it came out yesterday. So, all right, my man, what do I owe you? All right. Thank you, sir. There we go, sir. Action. Sorry, dude, like you didn't really get the lighting shot. Here, we're going to put it out and light it again. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. 
None of this is staged. None, none of this is staged, Lord. Well, this is all cinema very safe. We get everything in the moment. Totally. Like like the way we opened the fucking childproof box. That was tight. <laughs> I'm gonna go up on the porch. Once we've figured out how to do the child safety. <laughs> there you go, the slider. Nice! Nice child safety, guys. 